Hey, what's going on? It's Phil. So we're talking about CBCT positioning in this video. This is one you're gonna to wanna to send to your dental assistants. They're the ones that are typically capturing all of your scans. And positioning is pretty key for a variety of applications. We'll get into it right now. For more content, tutorials, tips, and things like that, you can follow me on Instagram. We'll see you later. Okay, so we're gonna first talk about CBCT body positioning. So we can see in this first example, you can see from this lateral perspective, we see a, a very drastic lean in by the patient. This can be hard to see. If I'm only standing in front of the patient and looking at them in the face, their angle of the body can be more challenging to see. So it's very helpful to look at them from this perspective. And we see this exaggerated lean in. In this example, we may not get enough vertical height for the patient. We're really not in a good position. There's a lot of issues with taking an image with the patient leaning in like that. This next one is a little bit better. You can see the patient still uh, leaning in a little bit more or a little bit further uh, than they really want to be. And again, harder to detect if I were only looking at the patient from the front. And this is gonna be a much better body position for the patient. Their feet are all the way forward. They're standing up nice and straight. And this is gonna be much more effective for getting a good image and making sure that we have really nice clearance for our machine, not hitting head, not hitting shoulders, things like that. You can see just as an example of the line, this line is kind of lined up in the same area each time. And we can see how much of the patient's body and is all behind the line. This one's a little bit better. And then this one we can see it's lined up right in the patient's heels and, and the line goes up through her legs and body and head in a nice straight line. The patient's standing in a really nice position for this. You could even have the patient shuffle their feet forward even a little bit further. And you can see in this example, they're actually angled back just a tad as well. One other thing to, to notice is you'll see the patient's hands are very close to her chest. So that's what we really want. You don't want them leaning into the machine. If there's a large gap between the patient's hands or the black mask of the patient's chest, um, that's an indication that they're leaning in way too much. Shoveling their feet forward, getting really nice and close, that's a good indicator that we're in a much better position. Okay, here's something that you definitely want to consider. I hate these lead aprons that have the junction or the connection point at the shoulders. You can see here in this example, uh, we're losing roughly an inch of clearance space for the machine to rotate around, and that could mean a lot. So um, you wanna be conscious of that. Double check to see what you're using in the practice. A much better option, in my opinion, is to use a non-leaded apron. So number one, it's a lot lighter for your patients, which is nice. And number two, it connects in the front using Velcro, and that way it just sits flatter on the patient's shoulders, giving you as much clearance as possible. So all these little tips are even more important when it comes to your necklace patients. Not, not your patients wearing necklaces, like, like necklace, like having no neck. All right, moving on. And by the way, the Velcro goes in the front of the patient, not the back. So the front of the patient is crossing over like so. Uh, I see way too often that offices have this on backwards. Not the end of the world from a radiation perspective, although there is more scatter radiation coming from the back of the patient. That's why it's worn in the back where the larger piece is in the back. But also, um, almost more importantly, is a lot of times if it's on backwards, you're more apt to have an error like this where the apron is crossed over in the back and you have a large piece that's kind of hiking up at the back of the patient's head and you get something like this, all right? So the Velcro will always be crossed over in the front of the patient. So the previous images were coming from the 8100 3D and the 8200 3D, very compact machine which is extremely helpful in tight spaces, tight environments. Now, the 9600 is different. So I'm showing a picture here of the 9600 with an integrated seat. 
9600 does have a very unique rotational path, a larger rotational path. It's a larger machine, has some unique features as well. And with a larger rotational path, it is much more forgiving for all patient sizes and shapes. Now, that said, I wanted to give you a couple tips when using the integrated seat, or one tip, basically. When a patient normally sits down, they're going to be shifted or scooted back further on the seat, like you see here. And they're kind of tilted forward, like I was showing you on the other images. So what you want to do is have your patient scoot up. Scoot forward, so you're sitting on the front half of the seat. The patient's feet will also be more planted on the ground for stability, depending, uh, especially if they're shorter, actually. But now we can see same type of lines. Here, this vertical line, the patient's further behind the line. And here, they're really lined up nicely. You can even see the patient's neck here, and the difference of the patient's neck. And in this particular scenario, the patient is seated nice and straight, uh, good posture, good positioning, and nice and stable. So you want to keep this in, in mind if you're using the integrated seat. Okay, let's talk about head positioning a little bit. Uh, there are a few items that I do teach when it comes to positioning a patient's head. We'll go through a few of these items right now. So usually when we're positioning the patient, we want the arch that you're capturing to be fairly parallel to the floor. But when you're capturing both arches, I generally just instruct the patient to look straight ahead. So here's an example of the patient looking straight ahead, and you can see how that would translate to what you see on the CBCT. Usually, patient's anatomy, if they're looking straight ahead, the maxillary arch will be fairly parallel to the floor, the mandibular arch is going to be angled down a little bit. You've got the curve of speed. So this is generally what you're going to get when the patient looks straight ahead. Now, you could have both arches a little bit more balanced if you raise the patient's chin up just a little bit, but you're getting a little too granular there, and I don't really think that's necessary. So I think looking straight ahead is totally fine. If you're capturing a single arch, so just the maxillary arch, we can give those same instructions like I just showed you. So the patient's generally looking straight ahead as well. And you can see here, here's this same example. We have the maxillary arch, which is nice and parallel to the floor. So it's more easily visualized in the 3D software for planning purposes and diagnosis. Now, when it comes to capturing a single arch in just the mandible, you're going to notice that the chin is actually higher up. So in these instances, raising the chin flattens out the mandible, so it's more easily visualized in the software, just like we described for the maxillary arch. And you'll notice here, having the chin up translates to visualizing the CBCT in the software. So we can see here the mandible is nice and flattened out. So these are little things and little tips to visualize as you're capturing, either it's both arches, or a single arch. So this is an example of the chin being too far down. And it might be hard to notice if you're looking at the patient from the front, how their position is a chin too far down or up. You really sometimes need to stretch them out a little bit higher. And then as you see their chin raise up because they can't go any higher, you can bring them back down again. But it, it can be a little bit more challenging to visualize the angle of their chin from the front. But this is an example of the chin being way too far down. And you can see what that would do if I'm trying to visualize just the mandibular arch and how that's gonna come out all angled in the software, which can be a little bit more challenging to then go through the software, number one. Number two, an extreme example, might be you might cut off the crowns of the posterior mandible. That is a possibility, depending on the patient, the anatomy, just how severe your 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 chin is angled down. So this is you know this is something to consider. Here's the side by side comparison. Chin is going to be up for a mandibular arch versus the chin being too far down for that same mandibular arch, and how that translates to what you see in the software and how that patient is oriented. Okay, so I hope this is helpful. Feel free to comment, ask questions, and we'll talk to you later. See you.